Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing y'all how we can make a Mipsil VM in Kimu. Generally you'd want to do this if you're trying to, uh, to do full system emulation of an IoT device. Mipsil and MIPS and ARM, those are generally the architectures that IoT devices use. Um, so yeah, let's get right into that. First thing we would do is go to cdimage.debian.org at uh, this directory and you can see we got multiple architectures that we can choose from. I'm going to be going with the Mipsil one and then we go to ISO CD and that's basically what we're looking for here. This guy, we can just uh, let me close down my VM and go to, uh, yeah, sure. Let me get that. And then the next thing we're going to want to get is the kernel and the initial RAM disk files. And these are the kernel and initial RAM disks for uh, uh, for the net install image. We're going to be going to ftp.debian.org. You can see this is the directory that I'm going in for specifically the uh, Mipsil installer that I'm currently downloading right now. I'll just get that. As well as that. Cool. So from here what we can do uh, is create, well, first off you'll have to install Kimu. So you can just apt search Kimu and that'll install the Kimu utils, etc. Um, We'll also have to install uh, Kimu System MIPS, and that's going to allow you to emulate Mipsil, MIPS, Mipsil 64, you know, multiple different types of uh, smaller types of architectures. <laughs> uh, next thing we're going to do, though, is run Kimu image. And we're going to create a basically an empty QCOW2 image. QCOW2 is the file type that uh, that is the for, for the VM image that Kimu uses. We're creating an empty one because what we're going to do is with that net install ISO, we're going to install Debian into the empty QCOW2 file. So from there, we should be able to just start it up using uh, sudo Kimu system mipsil. I'm going to point it to the CD-ROM. I believe this is pretty much what we're going to be doing. We're pointing it to the ISO image and as well the HDA, which is our uh, empty... Um, what is that the name of the... Uh, of the QCOW? No, it is not. So I'm going to have to change the name of the QCOW. It was a so VM if I could type. <laughs> uh, and from there, that should be it. Yeah. Yeah, we're pointing it to the QCOW image that we created that's empty. We're specifying the CPU, which is MIPS Malta. We're specifying the kernel file, and we're putting the boot mode and debug. We are using the initial RAM disk file, and 512 megabytes of RAM, that's generally going to work for MIPS, MIPSL architectures. Um, we are mounting the root file system to dev SDA1 within the Kimu environment. And we're getting rid of base address randomization, that's what that means. And no graphic is going to allow it to all just happen within the terminal. We won't have like a window popping up and taking up a bunch of space that is not necessary. That's a problem. I didn't do QCOW2, I just did QCOW. And this is going to be a really long process. So I'm not going to go over the full process of this uh, because it'll take maybe about like two, two and a half hours to finish the full install. It's while it is the only option that you kind of have for uh, Mipsil emulation, it is still 
a considerably slow install. So I just want to get wait until the uh, terminal interface comes up so you can see that this just becomes a regular Debian install from here. And there you go, yeah, it's a... Uh... Ooh, that, that busted it. <laughs> yeah, sure. There you go, you can see from there on out, it's basically a regular uh, Debian install. We're not gonna go through that whole process though. What we will do though, is after you are done installing it, you won't uh, you won't want to boot straight into the operating system. What you're going to have to do is after the, you have installed it, uh, remove from the, or rather extract from the boot directory of the QCAL file that just had Debian installed into it. You're going to extract the initial RAM disk and the kernel from there, because if you try to boot again from that image, you will just start the install process all over again. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to want to install uh, libguestfs tools, and that's going to allow you to mount the QCAL image. Uh, and we can do something like this, uh, sudo guest mount. I'm going to be mounting uh, another image that I had that actually does have Debian installed on it. There we go. So now basically what I'm doing, um, you can see uh, in this directory, I have a hda.qcow. That's the, that, that's another image that I have that has Debian installed on it. I have mounted that to dev sda1 and then we have mapped dev sda1 to a directory that I now can actually access. So if we just list mount our pi, uh, sudo permissions, please. You can see it's the uh, file system of the Mipsel VM. And what we're going to be doing from there, we just, uh, yeah, sudo cp. Yeah, from there, um, let me just make it easier this way. If we list the contents of the, uh, of the boot directory, that you can see we've got the initial ram disk and the kernel file that was installed from the uh, the installer itself these are the ones that are actually going to be for the installed os and that's why we need to extract them so that we can provide them as arguments to chemo uh, so yeah you can just copy those to your current working directory which um i've already done and from here, the command we're going to be using is kimu system mips. And you're always going to want to do this with sudo permissions, or at least that's kind of how I've done it. We're doing uh, using HDA to specify the QCAL. We're no longer specifying the CD ROM because that was for the installer image. And then we were specifying our CPU, passing in our kernel and our initial RAM disk. 512 megabytes again. Same argument for uh, append. And this is just some extra stuff that I've added for network port mapping stuff. No graphic. We can just run that. Oh, I need to unmount. So once you've extracted the initial RAM disk in the kernel, you'll just uh, be able to do guest unmount. And now we can run it. <laughs> And so, yeah, from, from there, you'll be able to uh, map, map certain ports that you want to have access to uh, from the host system and be able to interact with your VM. Um, that's pretty much it, though. And uh, you'll also, because it's the more recent version of Debian, be able to use um, apt and, you know, all the, all the regular things, like it's a regular Debian VM. And... Um, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I, uh, I hope that's helpful to some of y'all.